Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. This is Mary Scott, and you're on the Personal Development Hub. I'm very excited today for our Tuesday Power Up Talk because you can see this gorgeous woman, this woman that I have today that we intend to have some fun, some serious questions, but also <laughs> some enlightening. I think she's going to bring a lot of wisdom here. Her name is Kelly Valudos from New Zealand. She is a lifetime educator, great knowledge, entrepreneur, and also the founder of the Arc Education. Now, I'm very curious to hear some perspectives from Kelly about personal development. And if you're here live, good for you. Be sure to put some comments so that when Kelly and I get off the school, we can see them all and support her. Ask some questions if you feel you need to. Let's get underway. Kelly Maludos, welcome to you. Thank you so much for having me on here, Mary. It's um, I've watched the others and I'm a little nervous because um, they all the all the guests that you've had have been so amazing so far so I've got lots to live up to and I'm I'm looking forward to it <laughs> oh my gosh that's kind of like the barometer you know the the who's who and who you know oh my gosh now you're making me feel nervous Kelly Look, <laughs> you're an inspiration the arc education a long time educator and I giggle because I didn't have much education. So I giggle about that contrast straight away. <laughs> but let's start with this point today. Where does personal development sit within the education, education system as far as you know? Not the old system that we're looking at that, that the struggle is against or, you know, what is it according to Kelly Bludos? Education, according to Kelly Valudos, is all about personal development. Um, the focus for me should, could, would <laughs> be on developing our children to become the best that they can be, to realize the power that the, the innate power that is within each one of them to create the reality that they want, that they love. Because if we've got a whole lot of people who are connected, connected to themselves essentially first, because you cannot connect to anything else until you've connected to yourself, um, and connected to others, connected to the earth and connected to, to whatever higher power they subscribe to. If we have those fully connected young human beings, can you imagine the absolute powerful changes that could happen in this in this on this planet? Oh my gosh. It, oh absolutely. It, it it has no bounds. I agree with that. And how long how long have you been an advocate for that philosophy, that whole notion of younger people connecting with themselves, understanding themselves? Mm. This, is this a lifelong journey? Tell me more about that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, Mary. Um, you know, when people ask me when I started my personal development journey, <laughs> I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you because it's it seems that I was born into it. <laughs> I've always been different, not and not in a bad way. Different, different doesn't mean negative, you know, for me. Different and um, just as different. I've from a little girl, I was always very um uh, I guess people used to, the adults used to look at me and they, I remember my mom being told that I was way too wise for my, for my years. <laughs> 
And I often knew stuff that I shouldn't know, not because somebody had told me, but because I just knew it. So I guess right from, from a real young person, I've always had that drive to um, get to know myself a bit more and to get to know other people around me a bit more and to connect at a real sort of soul level, at a deep level. Um, that didn't always stand me in good stead uh, for, you know, for social stuff. Uh, not that I've I'm serious or anything like that at all. Um, but, the, it, you know, sometimes people don't um, don't appreciate that that deep soul connection because it's it 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 causes vulnerability. And so right from a young person, I was always aware that 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 connection is absolutely paramount for everyone at every stage of their life. And when I became an educator, um, even though within the system that is still around, um, but it is crumbling at the moment, which is not a bad thing, um, <clears throat> that, that um, mandate, I guess, of making making that connection of empowering children and young people to connect to themselves is is a hindrance <laughs> rather than rather than a, a, an advantage or a focus. Um, so I've always kind of known that this is where I'm going and this is what I need to be doing. Um, and also being able to um, facilitate others to do the same. It's very interesting what you're saying. I love that. And my question is, does that mean then that personal development can be an innate thing? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And um, I, I think it's also a little bit of an, um, a misnomer personal development or, or a misunderstood thing because we're all developing, whether it be at a snail's pace or at the speed of light, we're all learning all the time. Um, and I very much have learned through my life that I create every situation that I have found myself in. Whether I see it as negative or positive, I've created that. I've created that through my innate um, power of, of creation, which we all have. Um, I think when we start realizing or becoming conscious of that innate power and taking responsibility for it, that's when we start thinking that we're on the journey of personal development, even though we've been on the journey of personal development. Okay, so it's not before. known. It's not always known, known to us. However, you're one of the fortunate people that say it was known to you. And it set you on a, well, an amazing journey forward. And yes. you talk about the soul connection. Is that what you meant, that that part is sometimes misunderstood? Or were you meaning the innateness of personal development is sometimes misunderstood? Can you clarify that for me? Um, I'd say the, the innateness of personal development is misunderstood um, in that people, everybody is on a personal development journey. Um, so when we talk about personal development, um, I guess it's, 
it kind of has become an industry as well, which is neither here nor there really. But um, the, the fact of the matter is though, is that we're all on this journey. And when we become conscious of the journey that we're on, then we say that we're on a personal development journey. Um, and um, I'm certainly, you know, I'm so grateful for people like you, Mary, who have been an integral part of my personal development journey. And we all need each other, you know, all the connections we make, we need those. We've created those so that we can further go on our journey. I think that's very, very gracious of you to say. Thank you. One of the things that interests me about what you're saying is you're saying, and I think this is right, so it's innate. I get that. I think that's magnificent. Truly agree with that. Does that mean we all need like an, a moment of awakening to go, oh, to bring us conscious, oh, we're actually on this journey? Do you think, do you think that's true mostly? And it's a big thing to say, but... Because that's what I observe, that people have this moment. Because one of the mm -hmm. things I talk about with my guests here is, was there a moment? Was there a line in the sand? Was there, that pivotal moment they went, oh, there's got to be more to life than this? Um, yeah, I think we all have um, milestone moments in our lives. And for me, um, my dad, my father died when I was eight years old. And that was one of the pivotal moments for me um, when I realized that there was something after death. Um, I have had a really, really close relationship with my dad. And obviously, when, when, when he died, I... I felt bereft at first, but then I felt a really strong presence. Um, and when you're when you're eight years old, you don't question that, you know, you don't sort of question, oh, is this real or isn't it real? Because everything's real, you know, when you're eight years old. And um I developed a really strong relationship with this presence who I knew was my dad. And so that was the first sort of conscious um, realization that there's something more to life than just this body and going to school and, you know, making friends and things like that. Although those are really important parts, but there's something a bit more. And, um, and then there's other these other pivotal moments, um, when, when I graduated from university, that was another pivotal moment for me because it was a huge change again. You know, I was now entering the big bad world and, <laughs> and having to, and having to um, make a path for myself. Um, and that, that was quite scary. Um, that was quite scary at the time, but you know, we, well, I gripped my teeth and got on with it. <laughs> yes. Went off, yeah, went off traveling and, and met all sorts of people, including who's now my ex-husband. And um, that was a huge, huge part of my life, you know, that another, another layer to the onion, so to speak, that is, that is my, my personal development but I think the most uh, obviously my the the death of my mum was another was another moment where reality you know the reality of the cycle of life and and again that connection beyond beyond the veil so to speak it was another reminder um my divorce was probably one of the hardest parts of my life, to be honest. I was the most fearful. Um, it brought to the fore all my 
subconscious beliefs that I had developed as a kid, not least of all that I'm alone, you know, I don't belong, I'm alone, all those subconscious beliefs really came surfacing to to the top when when I went through my breakup with my ex-husband um and all based in fear you know fear of mm. not succeeding fear of uh, you know fear of failure fear, fear of being alone fear of not enough you know all those things that they really really um did a dirty number on me <laughs> <laughs> if you if you are watching this on the personal development hub welcome if you've just joined us this is really juicy stuff here i am with kelly Baludos, entrepreneur massive massive big time educator and the founder of the arc education do listen put some questions I'm trying to slow her up so I can ask some more, so I can dig deeper. <laughs> but uh, you're a wealth of knowledge, Kelly. And I wanted to ask you, going back to that little girl of eight and developing this relationship with this presence, how should I ask this? <laughs> because, well, let me just preface something. I see this in children too, and I think, oh, this is so exciting. Mm -hmm. And then I see them years later and they're not mm. in that. And, and and I'm someone that developed that later in life and certainly in the groove, as you know, about presence and, and being aware. Did you ever lose it with your dad? Have you ever lost it? I, I, I think we all lose that innocence because that connection comes from innocence complete innocence and um, we build these um expectations i guess around who we are how we are and those expectations are almost almost callous us you know and we're not the only ones that that place these expectations on ourselves everybody else around us does as well you go to school you're conditioned out of it you know don't tell lies don't tell stories don't mm. use your imagination for goodness sakes because you know that that's goodness, no no don't <laughs> even think about it. oh my god <laughs> yes i understand what you're saying and and that's yeah. been something I've been aware of for years and it's in this in this in its innocence is to me the delight of it all mm. if we could retain that because I know that that is another world but the invitation is always there to participate and the point I'm getting to long-winded as it might be <laughs> is that how did that help you understand you more starting at the age of eight, eight and then you had all these other pivotal moments which you mentioned which are also important what do they say this is all character building <laughs> did one build on another um do you know what i don't really think one built on another i think what they did was like a sled sledgehammer to the head <laughs> Oh, that, that's brutal. What an image. And that bang. Well, I I felt like that. Um, particularly the last couple of pivotal experiences, one of which I haven't mentioned was the, the latest one was when I um had to walk away from my career as a teacher, as an educator, because of the mandates that were set here in New Zealand um but and that and my divorce I think were probably the two most scariest um sledgehammers so to speak but what they did was well my divorce broke my heart and I remember saying to my friend who's even wiser than I am <laughs> um I said to her, I, my heart is broken. And she said to me, Kelly, be grateful for a broken heart. 
because it's open. Mm. And that absolutely floored me. I was like, oh my goodness me. She's so right. Because when you're in that vulnerable position, you're in innocence. You're in mm. innocence again. And um, that opened me up to all sorts of life experiences, including learning to um, meditate and um, a practice um, that I have taken through since then. And that was nearly 16 years ago. So it, it, it opened up a whole new life for me. It opened, it actually opened my heart up. A broken heart opens your heart. Um, and then the second sledgehammer, which was um, two years ago, nearly two years ago, um, that served to make me, <laughs> it forced me, the universe gave me a good kick up the bum, um, to make me follow my purpose. Um, and my purpose is, I've always known it, and I've had confirmation of it over the years through various events and synchronicities and strange, strange people coming up to me and telling me, um, literally, um, that I'm here to, to facilitate a change facilitate the transition from this very third dimensional and um, limited view of education to a um, limitless fifth dimensional and above um, view of education, I guess. Not, not even view, but like a practice of education. Opening it up opening it up basically yes because it sounds a little bit like phoenix arising from the ashes what yes. you speak about that mm. through that i'm going to call it adverse time yeah. where you surrendered or gave up or was forced to give up it's all of those in some respects <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yes. forgive me yeah. i took a bit of license there but that then opened up this other aspect mm. Mm -hmm. purpose how important do you think purpose is in creating your purpose for yourself in terms of getting on the right path for you yeah oh it's absolutely essential um especially in this time <laughs> you know um i it, it <clears throat> it's a it's a really exciting time to be alive. Very exciting time to be alive. Scary, <laughs> but really exciting. Um, because, you know, I don't know if you've heard about the quickening, but, you know, this really is the quickening. Everything is moving so fast at the moment. And if you don't find your purpose, you'll just drown. Or, or get run over by those who have found their purpose. And so it's really, really important, I, I feel at the moment, to know why you're here, to know mm. where you're going, and um, to have that intention, that end intention of what you want your life to look like. Yeah. It's quite something, isn't it, from... What you describe is so many occasions of deep fear, not knowing I'm going to be on my own. Oh my gosh, you know, mm -hmm. someone's not going to run in here and rescue me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the other bit. It's like, can someone just come in and, you know, <laughs> exactly. you know, like the door's going to open any point. Yeah. You know, in those <laughs> low moments. Yes. I've yes. had one of those or a few of those. It's the lowest, and you're, and you yeah. just, yeah. You're just looking, is there someone going to come? In? And then all of a sudden you're like, hell no. No. It's up Self to me. Yeah, yeah. Self-reference. Absolutely. Like yeah. I like that. Um, 
Yeah, and, and if you think about it, Mary, that's what the whole of humanity is like at the moment. There's so We cannot look for heroes. We cannot keep looking for heroes, for people to rescue us. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that um, happening, I think, you know, I, I, because for so long we've we've been rescued, you know, um, we we haven't really, as a human race, been allowed to understand our individual power, because if if we understand our individual power collectively, we're not we're not controllable. <laughs> oh no, it's a it's we're an absolute <laughs> force. <laughs> yeah. It's a force absolute. to be reckoned with. It that collective force. And I guess, um, and you can't thing, have that collective force without the the individual. No, that's right. No, I agree. That, and it comes yes. from here first, from yeah, each one. Yeah, of and them. then then it it's a very expanded perspective. Does yeah. that mean you transcended your fear? Um, <laughs> you know that fear is always there. <laughs> Our, our subconscious beliefs are always there. They will always be there. They're our egoic vehicle, basically. That's how we get through life. And in fact, they're neither good nor bad. They're just there. And every single one of us has them. It, it, I don't care who you are. You have them. We all have a shadow side. Um, and recently, I, I attended a course um, a five-day course that um, which I'd done before but this time it, lots of new stuff landed for me but one of the biggest things that landed for me was that um, my subconscious beliefs a lot of people call them negative beliefs but they're they're neither negative or positive but they're a definite part of me you cannot get rid of your subconscious beliefs you can become conscious of them and choose for something different but they those negative beliefs are actually what lead you to the positive or to the light the shadow leads you to the light until you actually can accept and understand those subconscious beliefs you don't really make any progress towards your purpose agreed it's like the contrast isn't it that's what you're saying yeah, because Until you're going you... round in circles exactly and the contrast yeah. I love the contrast that adversity gives me mm. and I agree with that okay. our unconscious beliefs are just that uh, just that there's no judgment on them. That's just how they are. They are. But at the same time, without them, there's no contrast. And how exciting. Exactly. And I agree about the fear. I think I think fear is a good thing to have because it keeps us safe. <laughs> it mm -hmm. hopefully keeps us aware. Mm. But it also, fear can bring us back into the here and now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Absolutely absolutely so that whole polarity i mean there's the natural law of polarity that that's at work all the time um you know yeah even now th these fears I, I i still have fear of not enough you know never i never seem to have enough money you know that, that goes goes through my head but um which is actually not true because I'm still here. <laughs> I've still got a roof over my head and food in my belly. And, you know, um, I obviously have enough. Um, well, it's such an intellectual thing, isn't it? You know, it I is. obviously have enough. The bottom line <laughs> is what you're saying is that sometimes that I, you, me, them, we have feelings of, not enough i'm not enough they are not enough we are not enough 
exactly and that that's a subconscious belief too you know that's right and when you make it conscious even if it's just it's for those for moments yes you go oh I'm absolutely enough and then this is my take uh, depending on your level of awareness and being able to stay in the now is how long that'll last absolutely absolutely that's beautiful I like where we're digging here now if you're watching today you're on the personal development hub this is our private Facebook group all things personal development and our guest today is Kelly Baludos now if you're finding this interesting or if you've just joined us do put some comments do ask some questions because we're digging pretty deep here and if you are like oh my gosh what are they on about do ask questions <laughs> um we're pretty game and uh Kelly is an educator an entrepreneur and she is also the founder of the ARC education now you can always google that if you want to know more <laughs> Kelly let's get back to you this is really cool I love the depth of which we're going here is this normal talk for you mm, fairly <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much um do you know what I found, Mary, is that over the actually probably the mm, past three or four years, my whole um, circle, you know, friendship circle has completely changed. Um, I guess, you know, the outside always matches what's going on on the inside. And there's been a huge transformation within myself, not only the last past two years, um, although the past two years have been ex <laughs> exponential change. Um, it's no longer a curve, it's just a vertical line, <laughs> that, that learning. Um, but over the past four years, um, four years ago, I moved down to Wellington after having spent 20, 20 years, 21 years in Rotorua, um, here in New Zealand, in the North Island. And um, I guess I, I just followed my intuition. I just felt like I had to move down here and since I've moved down here, I mean, it hasn't always been easy, but I have noticed an enormous change in my energy, in my circle of friends, in my conversations. <laughs> um, and that, I, I, yeah, I, how do you explain that? I guess it's just... <laughs> it's just how it is you know so yeah talking about whether this is normal conversation it pretty much is for me <laughs> where I was going with that was something about I'm aware that <coughs> sorry <laughs> you you I think that we as individuals because I know I'm aware of this we actually have to seek meaningful conversation mm. because I think and this is a bit of a generalization but my experience of it is there's plenty of talk to be had but that's all it is is talk what is it they call it white noise or something chit chat <laughs> yeah. excuse me catching it from you no no not really <laughs> but you know I think meaningful converse, conversation is something very different if someone's listening today and they lack meaningful conversation what would you say to them in terms of let's look at all things personal development what do you believe they could do to create more meaningful conversation in their lives surround themselves with people who you can have that, that meaningful conversation with um you know mary some people just don't want to have deep and meaningful conversations um which is okay that's absolutely okay i find it quite difficult to talk to those people now um 
before I was fine, you know, I was gregarious and not that I'm not gregarious now, but I, <laughs> I, I find it quite difficult to hold a conversation with somebody that's just chit chat. Um, it bores me, <laughs> sounds very selfish, but it, I get to the point where I stop listening because I'm, it's like my mind's moved on, you know, or maybe my heart's moved on. I don't know what it is, but I don't meet very many of those people anymore. But if you are somebody who is longing to have those conversations, who's longing to express their experiences and, and talk about the weird and wonderful stuff that happens, I think if you have an intention to share that, the universe will always, always bring some bring the people that need to be with you towards you. So have more faith. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> have more faith. Be Surrender. prepared to, yes, that too. There's an interesting word. And to be still to listen to what is within called intuition and a whole lot of other things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Allowing, allowing is the big thing, I think. We're always trying to do. And um, when you're trying to force something like, oh, I need to make friends. <laughs> when I, I've always found that when I think to myself, I need to make friends, I cannot find a friend for Correct, you repel them. High water. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, surely repel them. That's a very <laughs> interesting Because you're coming from a place of need. Um, you're not coming from, you, you're running away from something rather than running towards something. And, um, and that's another thing that dropped for me in this course. So often... <laughs> You know when we when we do our when we do our vision boards and when we're when when we're trying to manifest things, <clears throat> so often we're really not conscious of what we're actually doing. Um, for example, um, I have always had uh, this thing you know, um, like a choice that I make every day where I um, want to manifest abundance. I want to manifest money so that I can give. And I have lots of, lots of altruistic motives for it. But the fact of the matter is that choice was made every day out of the fear of not having enough money. So instead of attracting more money, I'm actually focusing on the fear of not having money. So therefore, I don't have any money, you know. Um, and we don't realize that when we make our choices, quite often we make our choices because we're running away from something. We're, we're uncomfortable about something. So I've got rid of that now. That's gone out of my choices. And when I feel myself thinking, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to have this amount of money, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, is that really what my heart wants? Does my heart want money? Or does it want, you know, um, it, or does it want to be able to give stuff to my kids or be able to, you know, that that's what we need to that's what I need to be focusing on and um so I think yeah we, we really have to be aware of where our intentions are coming from absolutely too. absolutely I think that is so true and I think that what is it energy follows intent so Absolutely. get clear about your what your intention. What what's your intention? 
and and you know and I know because I've said it a hundred times I'm sure around <laughs> social media I come in here every day and I say what's my intention for today mm. and it the reason I do it well there's a few reasons but one is bring me into the here and now mm. Right? Mm. it's a kind of a leveling thing that I say but you know mm. It's interesting what you say about money because the way you were doing it, I think what you were saying was it was actually focusing on the deficit mm. rather than, you know, the running abundant. away from it. Exactly. Yes. And then running when you focused it. on the good, sorry, yeah, the good and what you could give to people, not only your children, but the extended community, mm. then suddenly did it start to flow? Wow, we'll see. <laughs> watch this space i think that's watch what you're saying space. yes exactly that's mm. a good flip over isn't it because mm. so it was often, a real big realization for me it's a real aha isn't it mm. Mm. it was like oh oh you know i um because i've I, i've kind of whined about it <laughs> oh not whining you know whining <laughs> I don't mean whined about it, although <laughs> no it probably would have been better. But um, yeah, I kept thinking, well, why does everybody else have all this money and I don't, and I do everything right, and I'm a good person. <laughs> I, you know, I I don't want to use my money to control anyone or to, do, uh, and all of that talk that was subconsciously going on in my mind was all coming from the fear of that deficit i was i'm not running towards anything i'm running away from something yes that's great <clears throat> and if you're listening i want you to fess up why is it happening to everyone else <laughs> i never get that i love those words never and always they're usually yeah. childlike it's words. not fair <laughs> that's right i've had those too so if you're one of those people i just had to pop in here and say that Kelly. fess up now fess up <laughs> the doors yeah. are open the comments are open look i think this is fantastic and what i'm liking uh, liking such a weak word in some ways what i'm enjoying is that how nourishing it is to be firstly be on purpose and also to stay in the path of self-discovery mm. mm. well every minute of the day that we're alive is mm. self-discovery isn't it and that's what the learning is that's what learning is you know uh, just short and simple it's it's self-discovery it's living your life you know and and you know <laughs> some people say that you stop learning when you die i don't believe that you stop learning ever well, it's a <laughs> that's continue. why we're here well, well that's what we truly are we are the divine experiencing experiencing life experiencing separation from the divine <laughs> experiencing and what's experiencing but learning we're learning we're learning 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 that that's the whole purpose of existence i like what you're saying about personal development we didn't say this exactly is in everything that we do there's a growth mm. opportunity everywhere and yet what i constantly see is people talking about the latest book they've read or they speak as if it's something new <laughs> you, do you know what I mean it's like for goodness sake every little minute of every day is an opportunity to grow do you think we miss the point sometimes um I think we keep circling the point <laughs> a lot of the time um uh, one of my biggest things is realizing that you're actually you're actually learning only when you're uncomfortable you, you don't go forward you don't move if you're comfortable think really? about it if you're comfortable you just stay where you are and you snuggle in and you know it's all good 
the only thing that makes you move is discomfort. Maybe your leg goes to sleep and you think, oh, damn it, I've got to move, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's what life is, you know? Um, for me, I, I've had to learn to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I've said this before because it's creative tension um and Thank nothing you. is created without tension nothing oh, no no agree absolutely and i love that being comfortable being uncomfortable comfortable. that's yeah. where the, i call them growth spurts that's when the growth spurts happen yes um but so many people and i i do this I do it as well. Everybody does it, I guess, is always trying to resolve their discomfort. And that's why we're going round and square circles, so to speak. Square circles. I love that. That's quite an <laughs> you know? image, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if we, um, the way I explain it is if you want to get from A to B, okay, from here to here, um, you have to build or hang with the tension until you get here. You have an intention. This is my intention. This is my end result. And you just have to hang with that tension. And this is where the surrender and the faith and the allowing comes in. Once you've set this intention, once you've set this end result, that is when you say to the universe, it's how how you get how we get there is all you <laughs> this is i've set my intention this is where i'm starting from this is where i want to go and you hang with that tension that discomfort the minute you start feeling uncomfortable and then do something to release that tension which is creativity is 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 tension res resolving itself okay so um yes, when yes, you try yes. and resolve the tension for yourself you end up going in that circle in that loop in that loop um so the surrender and the faith and the allowing part of that manifestation is absolutely essential which many yeah, of us said many of us just find it very difficult not to resolve well, it's excruciating our isn't it it's excruciating which is why sometimes. why so many people give up mm -hmm. you're talking about surrender but i'm talking about give give up which is very different things Let's, yeah and it's interesting because i was and we probably should finish up to see the time oh my god <laughs> it's a bit like when you have children and you say them say to them hey have you ever thought of this like they don't listen and then someone <laughs> else says something and then and they, they come home <laughs> and they tell you you know what i'm gonna do mum i was talking to mm -hmm. <laughs> you know isn't that like there's a pathway right there mm -hmm. and and i think there's a lot of surrender in that as a educator as a mum as a personal development follower you have to be able to be oh, i guess humble might be the word in that moment to go it doesn't actually matter how we get it it's the fact that we get it is important would you say that to be true absolutely acceptance and and that's what surrender is it's not throwing your hands up in the air and go oh I give up it's that's not surrender surrender no. for me is that complete acceptance you know it is what it is and and that's okay everything is exactly as it should be even if it drives you nuts even it is a if reality it drives you nuts yeah absolutely absolutely i think that's a great place to sorry we're going to say something else no that was, oh, <laughs> I think that's i think that place. i think that's a great place to end our conversation today mm. you're a wise woman 
I love the the soulful connection that you're introducing. Uh, when I say introducing, I know that's part of you and you come from that place, which is what I appreciate most about you. But uh, I, I hope that all our listeners or people that are watching, and if you're watching the replay, do put hashtag replay so you can ask Kelly some questions. Give her lots of love, lots of feedback because she deserves it. Kelly, I wanted to say that keep inspiring people, stay the course, stay the course, stay the course. I know that you are, but I think like our missions, because I'm on a bit of a mission, as you know, and so are you, you're a real advocate for better education, better understanding of our children. Oh my gosh, I don't do it justice, forgive me, but I really um, commend you for the work that you're doing. Thank you so much for being here today and giving up all this time to share your knowledge. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mary. I've absolutely loved being chatting with you. Yes, that soul connection, those those soul conversations. Um, they're what life is all about. So thank you so much for the opportunity to to have one with you and to share it with everyone. I really, really appreciate all your work. You're an amazing woman. <laughs> Thank you so much. And if you are listening or you're picking up this recording, this has been one of those interviews that you might need to watch a few times. <laughs> but do leave the comments. We will see you next Tuesday again for another powerful conversation. Uh, thank you again, Kelly. Thank See you, you soon. <laughs>